These stories are inspired by the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Uh, executor welcome back to dan Aykroyd's lizard ball conspiracy <laughs> he's one of you know a couple people that are sort of known for this kind of wacky conspiracies but i have to say as crazy as he sounds he's one of the slightly more logical ones sometimes depends what he's talking about right yeah it's like he's he it, if you're thinking of crazy out there conspiracies it's halfway to fucking dan Aykroyd's lizard ball conspiracy this is the best place to kind of start with this sort of thing and yeah if you're worried about straight up matrix like cia alien they, right straight up q-tip man the man who looks like a q-tip right, these are the perfect kind of spokespeople to start with it's your boss at the nsa yeah, we can dig more into the philosophy of this going on afterwards, but uh, yeah, like one of the main reasons is one prevents the other from taking full Dr. Evil control. The Lizard Man conspiracy prevents the Dr. Evil conspiracy, and it's the best thing we have so far. Right, if you got a better idea other than expecting everyone to do what you tell them to, you get it. If you're going to tell us to do something, you have to be able to tell everyone else in the world to do the same thing, otherwise it's not really fair, is it? And yeah, now that we've gone over the, you know, sort of main reasons the Judicator hangs around here with his lizard ball conspiracy going on, right, now we can finally get to the army. Yeah, whoever's been, uh, spy master's been sitting around waiting to report on the army. We're almost there, Brad. We're almost at the army. And this <laughs> thing, right, a lot of it's common knowledge, but just kind of concisely, again, compiled into what I see as the bigger benefits. It's, again, it's easy to just think, yeah, big army, lots of guns. Yeah, two big armies, lots of guns. The final point to touch off on here before we get there is, like, the SS, the Waffen, yeah, don't the Secret Service protect the president? Yeah, th it works both ways in both ways, think about it. Normally, national security is responsible for protecting the president. They sort of, the CIA, they have delegated that off to the CIA as their main right. It's like, again, this is your boss at the NSA, and he looks at you and says, someone needs to be in charge of protecting the president. And you're the, yeah, you're the only guy there? Yeah, I get it. That's your job, buddy. Yeah, and then so whoever else, exactly. So, right, I don't know. It's as best as I can come close to, you know. We'll, we'll start off from there. But yeah, basically, the, the Secret Service has the same thing. And again, each one prevents the other from stepping out of line. Yeah. What if the, the NS, what if the CIA kills the president? They're like, well, yeah, exactly. They could. Hypothetically, what if they, they went too far, went a little too hipster douchebag? Well, the SS Waffen can literally watch the watchers and make sure they don't go too far. That's why we are protecting the president from, you get it, from his own assassins, basically. It, I know how weird it sounds, but realistically, this keeps it in balance. And it, right, if it comes down to needing to assassinate the president, they we have to we both have to agree with it. Both of the spies have to call each other and be like, "All right, yeah, yeah, do my run an in or out like OJ, and which rape kit do I bring?" Th that's I know how, and it's funny. Like a lot of these conspiracies, even in the X Files, the crazy conspiracy guys in their basement. They're going so into, you know, JFK's assassination. Like, it could have been the government. Like, to them, if they find out that the government did it, that's like, that's it. That's all the evidence we need for whatever, I don't know, whatever else. That's kind of where they take it to. It's like, how far are you guys willing to take this? What are you actually trying to do? And he's like, we're going to get the, the truth. It's like, okay, that's one truth. That's one of many truths. And he's like, how, again, what more do you plan to do with this? Like, okay, tell the world. A lot of people already know. I mean, whatever. Sort of. Again, it's like, yeah, I don't know. They might, yeah, maybe they hired the fucking cable guy, but you get it. E either of us has to be ready to stop the president from launching nukes. You get it. What if the president steals the, yeah, what if the CIA steals the keys to the nuke launching silo? Yeah, the SS Waffen, straight up, the SS Waffen is going to save the world from them, from President Dr. Evil nuking the world. So that's that's just one aspect of it. And yeah, both of us protect the, the SS Waffen and the NSA slash CIA, whatever. They each have an eye on the president and each other. 
so that, yeah, making sure we're all kosher here pretty fucking much. That's the best way to balance the triangle going forward. Again, it's kind of like the Marshall Rayner's office. Yeah, Marshall Rayner and the NSA Master Assassinator, Ke Lieutenant Kerrigan, whatever, Master Chief Kerrigan, they, they, they have to agree on border security measures. If they, if they can't reach an agreement, if they are in conflict with each other, that's where, I don't know, that, like... Uh, stemming the tide uh, this all kind of comes back to the civil war uh, whether you care or not whether it's too old and boring or not one of the first like <clears throat> the first big war they had was the civil war with each other yeah they had to fight off the british but that didn't last very long <laughs> whatever i'm just saying uh, that was more like world war ii where everyone's like yeah cool awesome the civil war was like the cold war where it, no, yeah it wasn't awesome it wasn't fun it was yeah, dreadful and no one no one liked it when it was happening so afterwards, yeah, again, a lot of this too has to do with preventing a civil war. If there, you, you, I don't know how it sounds, but it's like even if a bunch of states want to fight a bunch of other states, it's like they, yeah, they'd be calling through the Department of Defense and Department of Justice. It's like leaving messages. Yeah, the, I, I know how far can you take this? The governor of Texas leaves a message with the governor of like Louisiana, like yeah, get ready, boy, we're gonna <laughs> right. Department of Defense is oh my god, no, you get it. The only way a civil war can happen is between the executor and the judicator, and it's set up as balanced as possible. Where you, well, yeah, the marshals are in a they have the key to most of the armories and stuff. If they have to, the marshal can lock down on most of their assets, and vice versa. There's only so many assets that yes, the executor may indeed execute the judicator, but then at that point, right? It's like yeah, one way or another, it could happen. But I hope you can see how the president is very much the class president, and these are the crazy parents that you hope don't kill each other. And of course, I'm sure whatever spy master is here to report on America, yeah, that means if you do, if someone else assassinates the president, yeah, they fell for the Chewbacca defense. It's Yeah, the straight-up Chewbacca defense of the president's dildo factory. It's, 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 yeah, again, it's like, that's the, yeah. I don't know. It's a yeah. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm sure the people would be pissed off if you killed a president that they liked. Yeah, right. Yeah, think about it. If if they didn't like the president, who knows? Yeah, it's up again. A democracy. The people may decide. Right. Yeah, you may decide how pissed off you are about this, that, or the other. I don't know how many people were pissed off about JFK. People were pissed off about Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One of them may have been a rogue third party. Many times it is, yeah, if anyone's in a position, yeah, who's the most likely suspect here coming from the Penitus Oculatus? Yeah, just speculating here from the fucking gut. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, top suspect is either CIA or SS Waffen, and if, if that is the case, they most likely conspire, this is most likely a government conspiracy lizard man orgy between the two in order to prevent a Dr. Evil nuking the world conspiracy. And, as douchey as it sounds, this keeps it out of Marshall Rayner's office and out of, uh, chief assassination bitch, uh, f you get it, out of the fucking executor's office. Right. That way, Kerrigan and Rayner don't get blamed for the dildo battling, literally the lightsaber dildo duels between the SS Waffen and the CIA and the president's office. That is happening basically every day. Say some other Dr. Evil conspiracy, l l imagine you like broke into the national security, yeah, what if you literally took over the CIA and had full control of the CIA? Yeah, now the SS Waffen is, a, <laughs> now you are dildo lightsaber dueling the SS Waffen, that's the whole point. What if you took over the Secret Service? Oh, here comes the CIA, that's right, you'd have to take over both. If you want to kill the president, you have to kill both presidents. Right, it's an executor and adjudicator, there's two keys to launch the nukes. This whole system is, yeah, the adjudicator, executor, fucking goddamn, the conclave imperator to deal with the hipster douchebags so that one hipster douchebag can no longer fuck up everything. You'd need at least two, at which point, yeah, we're working on it. And of course, before we go check out the army, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, Marshall Rayner's got the keys, he'll show you what, what's going on over there, but first... A lot of this, too, comes down to the issue of di uh, jurisdiction. Yeah, right? Is this your jurisdiction? It's my jurisdiction. Yeah, right? Whose side? Which side of the line? Yep. It, if everything's all binarily divided like this with two guards sitting on a wall, yeah, right? Keep the dildo battles uh, behind closed doors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, half of this is so you don't walk in on some weird shit. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to walk in on your parents, right? Exactly. And Well, you might be... Yeah, how big of a deal is this? <clears throat> Best place to start, uh, Washington, D.C.? Yeah. Well, does, what's the closest thing to a capital of the country? Or this is going back to how every other country seems to have one capital city. If you destroy that city, that's the, the heart of the empire, right? 
America sort of has a heart of the dildo factory. <laughs> Donald Trump, the White House is in Washington, D.C., and Washington, D.C. is not a state. There is some rebel rabble rabble rousing about uh, the people who live there wanting the same rights some states have. At the same time, they are exempt from certain... Th yeah, it's complicated. A lot of finicky little politics in the mailman's office over there. Don't worry, he's on it. But yeah, like, think about it. The president's office is not inside the United States. Just, Yeah. That means the judicator, uh, yeah, has no authority there, technically, not until he leaves. It's kind of like, you know what this reminds me of? The Vatican. The Vatican is its own little city-state inside of Italy. It, you, really, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with either of these things, you know what it's like? It's like Pretoria. Straight up. The president's office is Pretoria. It, yeah, straight up Peter Griffin, when his house is his property is its own country, not inside the United States. That is D.C. That is the Vatican. Washington, D.C. The capital of America is fucking Pretoria. And straight up Peter Griffin, Donald Trump is in the fucking White House. Or who, a, a guy who, yeah, so, who, you get it. So, uh, which one of us has to protect the president, wink, wink? Right. Well, if the president's in his office, the Secret Service technically has no authority. That, right, they have to be invited in there. So, yes, if the president didn't want them in his office, they wouldn't be in his office. Yes, he very much invites the SS Waffen into his office so that his own assassins cannot master assassinate him. In the Yeah, now it's just a big endless dildo battle going on, lightsaber duel going on between the two. Right. I don't know, just, it, it's a preventative measure. This way, no one's even going to think about it unless they already are Dr. Evil. Right, I don't know, it just, it makes, yeah, the spy master is still figuring it out. This helps keep all that cohesion together, right? To prevent civil war. Right, you know, if a civil war happened, well, we already have assassins in his office. Right, literally, you get it. It's like we already both have assassins in the president's office. The marshal already has keys to all the ar all the army's weapons, all the guns, and like everything except for the most cutting edge new shit. And okay, this too. If you're a crazy guy or whatever hipster douchebag thinking, oh yeah, no, I'm sure the army has stuff that you guys don't know about. Yeah, bro. Remember when I said abs? Yeah, get penitus oculatus. I'm letting you out of the fucking tax receipt room here at the FBI. Just think about it. Use your own brain. Think logically. There's the map of the jurisdictions of the United States. Yeah, well, the ones that aren't ours. Yeah, exactly. Absence of evidence. The, the ones that are not ours. So you're looking at the map of our jurisdiction, and there's like a, a little box in the middle of it. Like, oh yeah, that part's not ours. Oh, this tiny little box in the middle isn't ours? Yeah, whose is it? Well, that's the president's office. Okay, what about this one? Who knows? Yeah, fucking hell if I know. Fuck if I know, buddy. It's... Right. Think about it. There's a bunch of tiny little gaps on our map of jurisdiction of the whole country. The, the federal jurisdiction, the state jurisdiction. Oh, you're not within this state jurisdiction. Yeah, Area 51. It's a tiny little empty box on our map. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's somewhere inside that tiny box. Anything that Marshall Rayner has the keys for. If he doesn't, he's going to look at that map and be like, oh, what in Sam hell? Yeah, he's going to go there and ask what the fuck is going on. You get it. And then, yeah, do I have to call the executor? Does fucking Kerrigan have to show up? Yeah. Again, as stupid as it sounds, you might be insisting that there's definitely alien butt sex orgies going on on Mars somewhere. There are, but before I let you go there, yeah, <coughs> th this Marshal, uh, yeah, Grandmaster Marshal Rayner here, he already knows where Area 51 is, and he already has the fucking keys. Half of all this crazy lizard ball conspiracy nonsense is, oh, the codes, the keys, yeah, yeah, ooh, I hacked into this or that. Yeah, go to Marshall Rayner, he already has the fucking keys and the codes. Yeah, oh yeah, he can, he can literally walk into Area 51. At which point, again, it comes down to uh, Kerrigan and Rayner, whether they're having a hard time. Are they talking to each other today, or are they not talking to each other today? Yeah, is she being a bitch? Is he being an asshole? As long as those two can get along, there, there can't be a civil war. Yeah, you can go up the ladder. Eventually, you're going to get to Marshal Rayner or Master Assassinator Kerrigan. And as long as they're getting along, having a good time, they can, yeah, be like, guys, chill. And that's pretty much as far as it can go, unless things get, yeah. Yes, anything could happen, but you get it. Most normal conspiracies, like, oh yeah, the, the CIA could take, yeah, do you, you get it. What if the CIA did it? The SS Waffen was either involved or not, yeah, or if they weren't, it would have been different. It would have been lightsaber dildo duels between them while Rainer and Kerrigan were blowing shit up, or yeah, there would have been more to it. So, let's uh, expand on this. <clears throat> Hipster douchebag, use your own intuition, right? <clears throat> Imagine you are the president, straight up. There are CIA in your office, and there is SS Waffen Secret Service in your office. Right, which one? Who do you trust? Who do you not trust? Yeah, upper echelon, lower echelon. Depends on what's going on, who's around. Right. 
either way, you're better off having both of them here. If there is a fight, it's going to be between the two of them. Either one is either going to... Yeah, right? It's like, my god, if they both wanted to kill you, they wouldn't be fighting each other. You get it. Let's say things are not that crazy. Let's say this is not a diehard movie. Yeah, straight up. This is not a diehard movie yet. Things are cool. John McClane's just stuck at the airport bitching at his wife about Christmas. Yeah, straight up. That's that's the top... Uh, yeah, Marshall Rayner is getting along with Kerrigan. Like, yeah, whatever. Petty drama indeed. So, let's say the president, you, the president, are leaving your office. Yeah, you're going any, literally anywhere. Well, you're leaving, the, you're leaving Pretoria and entering the United States, at which point, you get it. There's some CIA with you, there's some Secret Service with you. Yeah, one of each in your fucking black armored vehicle, whatever, the president's limo. <laughs> So when you're when you're in DC outside of yeah when you're in your executor jurisdiction the the technically the CIA is is in charge yeah they're playing offense defense whatever playing defense and secret service is playing offense they're yeah not invited there not supposed to be there as soon as you enter the US judicator territory of a state a boundary of any kind <laughs> right yeah, now the Secret Service is playing defense and CIA is playing offense. And again, now we must invite them there, otherwise this is a breach of the, yeah, do I have to call Rayner and do I have to call Kerrigan? And again, if they're getting along now, it, yeah, if you keep pestering them about this while they're on their date, then the shit's gonna go, yeah, they're both gonna be coming into your office or my office, right. So yeah, I mean, it might not seem fair that Rayner can just walk into your top secret army base. Well, what about, yeah, what about the FBI? Well, our headquarters is in Washington, D.C. <laughs> you get it, yeah. Yeah, the, that the, almost became the world's biggest weed and hooker store with the Di Don Diablo's meth lab in the basement. Yeah, we had to kick out the D drug enforcement guys and all, who's taken all the al alcohol and tobacco. Yeah, right. This, the, the, the nerve center of all this, our headquarters is outside of, yeah, it's in their jurisdiction. So... If the FBI goes praetor imperator, right, the executor can come into our office because it's in their jurisdiction, not ours. Right, if it, right, if FBI headquarters was in Judicator's jurisdiction, we could be cooking up all the meth we want in Don Diablo's kitchen and no one would know nothing about nothing. Now that we're in executor territory, straight up CIA has, yeah, it's CIA in charge, not Secret Service. The SS Waffen has to be invited there, you get it. You get it. Rayner and Kerrigan have to get along. If they divorce, if they break up, yeah, if, if they can't get along in paradise there, then you're going to see some serious galactic fucking dominion of the queen bitch of the universe. Yeah, it's happened before. And so, just to be clear, that also means, you know, there's been debate about, oh, well, you know, if people have been shot trying to break into Area 51. Yeah, no, they have big signs saying you will be shot if you come in here and... Basically, yeah, when you're in the United States, yeah, you do have rights, partner. Just talk to uh, Marshall Rayner in the Supreme Court, Department of Justice. Yeah, when you leave the United States and you are now in the executor's fucking martial law jurisdiction, martial law of the fucking executor indeed, now Queen Bitch of the Universe is in charge, and if she's going to go all ghost uh, specter and cap your ass, then the, I'm sorry, Marshall Rayner can't really do much about it at that point. You broke into her bedroom, basically. Yeah, no, only Rainer is allowed to walk in there, exactly, if they're getting along. If they're not getting along, it's going to turn into a civil war, exactly. And remember, the NSA and the federal marshals are both joint responsibly for border security. That includes the borders around Washington, D.C. and Area 51 and all these tiny little blank squares on our map. Oh yeah, that tiny little square that's not America. Yeah, it's another base somewhere, it's fucking Fort whatever. So, yes, technically the marshal is obligated to know where that is because he's responsible for preventing invasion from that tiny little box, Pretoria 76, whatever. And the National Security Agency, yeah, Rayner and Kerrigan have to sit down and agree on all of these little boxes on the map. Uh, yeah, otherwise they're not doing their job. Yeah, you get it. The marshal is obligated to have keys to all of these Area 51 lizard orgy ba Yeah. You gotta let the lizards into the fucking conspiracy orgy department. Yeah, there has to be lizards in the lizard orgy. And of course, if you are the spy master, yeah, that means that realistically, America has two armies, two distinct, yeah, departments of kicking your ass, whether it's John Wayne or James Rayner or fucking straight up George Washington off the monitor dreadnought, you get it. If the army fails, yeah, like, yeah, right, 
there the whole there is a separate army just to protect the country so yeah you, you, people have gotten into things oh what if japan did invade america could they really make it no unfortunately not they didn't have enough soldiers they didn't have enough resources to conquer the states think about it even if uh, japanese 911 got past pearl harbor and made it to the states yeah they could wreak havoc and cause a lot of damage but they would eventually run out of fuel and ammo and food and people and right the, every time they got to a new state they'd run into another fucking james rayner apocalypse you, you get it they they get they have keys to all the armories at that point yeah nsa has given them the green light go to all the area 51s and get all the bfg fucking big fucking guns and yeah now they have all the tanks and missiles and yeah at that point i do get my fucking predator drones and specter drone fucking specter gunships yeah at that point there is a praetor apocalypse going on so right it's like there are two different armies this this one is doing this and that one's doing that until things go nuts so if, if you defeat the army you're then facing the other army who oh, yeah it's like they're not quite as good at this or that but they are very close it's like if you don't instantly follow up with that if you wait too long now james rayner is coming out of the here or there anywhere yeah yeah and kind of vice versa if you sneak in from the the outside whatever yeah like for what one reason or another uh, p uh prisoners of war if we capture bin laden whatever yeah i fucking arrested harminder at the airport you get it if he happens to get away the executors should be ready for that yeah yeah you're facing two armies no matter what so what about the normal army yeah yeah what about the department of the army and all their little offices here and you know I i'm not a I'm not a politician. It, it seems like a department is a group of agencies. You know what I mean? Like National Security Agency, Central Intelligence Agency. They work through the department. We all work through the Department of Defense. You get it. The Department of the Army includes the Corps of Engineers and all the other shit in the Army. Yeah, right. It's another office full of people with phones to call other people in offices with phones so that the spy master from here, there, anywhere is yeah, right. Even people who work there are confused. You get it. It's like it's just confusing enough that, yeah, so, sorry if it sounds like rambly nonsense, but you probably get it. When the army comes, it's coming out of uh, DARPA, DOA, fucking the, yeah, right. And like something like the Corps of Engineers, great little example to jump off from. Yes, there are engineers uh, in each department. Yes, someone has to build all these vehicles. Someone has to build the jets and tanks and planes. Yes, those are all engineers. Some things are contracted through private companies like Ford Engines or whatever, but then, right, someone's designing the... the right. Ford d did have, like, the, the example in World War II is the P-51 Mustang, the Ford Mustang. Yeah, exactly. After the war, well, let's put these engines in cars. Right. That's as close as it gets in a normal, like, stuff the public would know about easily. Right. Yeah, those were U UFOs back in the day. Whatever. Some fucking P-51s flying around before the Schmidt jets, and we all started going with the Luftwaffe Schmidt after that shit. Yeah, we all used the jets now indeed so basically <clears throat> yeah once again the the public face of the company the thing that yeah if you ask them well what do you guys do at work yeah they got to say something right yeah uh basically your core of engineers is like headquarter of headquarters of the nerds all, all the nerds in the lab who come up with whatever it, yeah and like if they're buying you know if they're going to contract out ford engines like okay think about it it's like we need an engine for our tanks okay i have a car outside that has an engine in it yeah should we start with that or should we start from scratch Let's buy the best engine available from our contractor. Yeah, who sells the best engine right there? Oh, Scar <laughs> Scarface fucking Al Capone says it himself. Ford makes the best getaway car. Let's start there. Buy a Ford engine. See, yeah, okay, this is the best we have so far. Sure, we can upgrade, improve, tw tweak this and that. But the, this core of engineers is the sort of nexus of nerds, literally. It, whether you're buying technology, selling technology, inventing, if you, someone in the Marines has an idea for this, so yeah, this kind of body armor, whatever. Complaints from the Air Force about, you know, airplanes in the Navy. Yeah, there are helicopters in the Army, there are airplanes in the Navy, there are fucking boats in the Air Force. Yeah, right. Someone's got to keep track of something around here. Here's your core of engineers, call ace headquarters, fucking bunch of nerds in a building that will, yeah, who do you need to talk to today? And this is, of course, the main, like, construction contractor. Yeah, like, when they, <laughs> building all these bases, yeah, there's hundreds of bases and bunkers and silos and, yeah. Instead, yeah, instead of calling a random contractor every time, well, should we get the engineers from, yeah, call ACE headquarters, there's your contractors for engineering construction, for building bases, well, if the Air Force wants a base, they might have to call the Army, yeah, call someone to call someone to call someone to call someone, eventually you'll call someone at ACE headquarters and they'll come build your base for you. 
and realistically this minimizes the cost like you know what i mean the markup your yeah it's get it done the fastest with the least expenditure a bulk purchase it's like okay building one base it might be cheaper to hire one guy yeah oh, I, I know a guy yeah some crazy guy can build a bunker for you what if you need hundreds of bases all over the country and more in the future yeah bulk purchase what do you charge for a hundred bases start your own fucking construction company and then yeah now you're now you can just tell them to build whatever the fuck you want and you're just paying for materials and right this cuts it down to the bottom line so that's their own construction company to build all their bases and shit you might get two it's also for the sake of security Right, if you just hired Ford to build the base or whatever, yeah, right, then whatever company you hired would have the blueprints to all your Area 51s, yeah, yeah, whatever so-and-so so contracting down the street would have, like, blueprints to Area 51 in their tax records, like, no, 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 don't just hire some other guy, yeah, start your own construction company, they build the bases, and then only you have rights, You only you have those blueprints, exactly, that way even James Rayner doesn't know what's inside the base, but he knows where it is, and he has the key, and if it comes down to it, one of them's going to be coming into your office. Again, this is the nexus of nerds. This is where any, you know, okay, we're going to build factories for these new tanks. These are the guys who are going to coordinate that. Whether you're hiring contractors, yeah, they'll build the factory exactly. Talk, call the marshal, where are we going to build it exactly? This is the office they'd go through, even like with uh, us with body armor and yeah, getting the, yeah, you don't doubt it, the marshal here going to get new tanks, whatever. Yeah, you don't doubt he's calling Ace headquarters to see what's up with the tanks. So in that, this also like, this is one of those big advantages. I'm sure most people will get, yeah, fucking Scarface Master Huntsman gets it. Yeah, this is a big advantage. Before we get into the lizard ball conspiracy, yeah. They got their own construction company, and depends, yeah, whether it's, again, this is like a whole department, whether you're building buildings and bases, whether it's vehicles, just ammunition and explosives, yeah, this might sound like peanuts, sure, sure, every little shell casing is just another peanut, it's millions, a lot of peanuts, motherfucker, yeah. Who's going to make all this ammo? Should we buy it all? Yeah, right. They are buying guns. Like, there's different uh, companies that make guns, like Browning Automatics or fucking uh, whatever, fucking Smith & Wessons and uh, uh, Chesterfield or Winchester. Again, buy the Ford engine, and then once we have the tank we want, once we have the rifle we want, once we have whatever, we can ma mass produce that one thing until we want something else, and then you call Ace Headquarters and do it all over again. Call the marshal. He needs to... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of like how McDonald's makes their own ketchup packets. Hey, you know, again, bulk purchases, cut in corners, that's one of their secrets. Yeah, they make their own little condiment packages, all the little salt and pepper packages, little sugar packages. Yeah, they have their own factory and their own company just to make ketchup packets so that they don't have to buy them. And in the end, it's cheaper. Same with this. Yes, this Corps of Engineers is in charge of make, making ammo, making ex, just explosive, like, material powder stores. Yes, and fucking, we're low on powder stores, sir. Yeah, I know, call Ace Headquarters. They have warehouses full of just raw explosives, gunpowder, fucking whatever, shells, artillery shells, bullets. Right, and just, because you gotta think, there's 50 bases, or 50 states with bases here. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking different places that need ammo. You got hundreds of people calling this office, that office, this department. A lot of phones ringing. Right, there's a reason they're not all in the president's office. And then, yeah, just when they thought their job was done, oh, we got all the bases we need. Oh, repairs, yeah, they're calling in, yeah, someone needs repairs here, there. Oh, we gotta build a base in another country. Yeah, right. Anytime you need to call the, yeah, call Ace Headquarters indeed. And so really, like, when you look at the, the army, yeah, there's lots of jobs in the army that don't involve combat. Yeah, half the jobs, or even almost more than half, like two-thirds of the army is people in buildings and offices. Sure, it might be dangerous work here and there, but only about a third of the army, as in the department of the army, is actually out there fighting, like, like you know what I'm saying. Uh, yes, that's still a large number. But there's, I can't remember, there's some kind of saying, for every soldier in the field, there's two other soldiers feeding him or, or getting him there. Yeah, one guy had to drive him there and the other guy had to feed him. And the third guy is the guy sh shooting people, right? So again, it's like, whatever, it's just easier to manage if you have this Corps of Engineers. And then yeah, something like the Marine Corps, that's the, the main difference, whatever. Yeah, they're both soldiers with guns and tanks. The Marine Corps is sort of, quote-unquote, tip of the spear. Sure, it used to be the old... Uh, the old red coats off the monitor dreadnought. Yeah, every marine is a rifleman. Every marine is basically a red coat with a green coat now. Right, even even the engineers, it's kind of the distinction. It's like, okay, 
right if you join the marine corps you're almost guaranteed to be carrying a gun around and having to shoot someone you get what i'm saying that's more like we know we're gonna ha we'll get into it but as opposed to let's say you want to serve the country but you don't want to get shoot people there's other jobs yeah you could get a job building things you could get a job inventing right there's other jobs that don't involve getting shot and yeah, I know how that might sound, but realistically, it means more access to soldiers and recruiting and everything, right? Like when you think about, okay, this army versus this army, this country versus this country, what's their population? How many able-bodied adults do they have? Right. If you just look at, oh, a billion people, yeah, half of them are elder, seniors, children, disabled people. How many able-bodied, healthy adults do they have available? Well, some people might be a little young to go shooting or whatever. You might have a small injury. Right. Little things. My Yeah, my eyes. You fucking potato face Batman. Fucking right. You could have problems. You could have some straight up problems like potato face Batman. But you can still make ammunition. Yeah, you can still be a fucking mechanic fixing vehicles. Exactly. And like when you apply, maybe you don't want your family all worried. Oh, don't worry, dear. I'm not joining the Marines. I'm just going to the fucking nerd lab at Ace headquarters. Yeah, you can come visit me on the weekends right Th that you get it. it it's whatever sleazy advertising that way people who otherwise might not if it was just the army in stalin's kremlin yeah you might not join yeah your wife might not want you to join stalin's army of kremlin i'm just joking guys come on you get it though or if you say i'm going to an engineer corps where i will be building things and fixing things and yeah yeah you can visit me on the weekend yeah you get it and even, you know, if when it came to drafting, and they, they don't do it anymore, but they could again. Yeah, if you're in a situation where you might get drafted, you could try draft dodging, whatever. You also have the here's up. Op yeah, options indeed. Here is another option. You may indeed join the army without any risk of running. Yeah, you don't, you don't even have to go to Vietnam. You can just work in a factory making ammunition to kill people. Hey, yeah, if not, you're paying, you're paying taxes for it. I don't know. I'm just saying options indeed. You, you may weigh the value of that one way or another, but it is possible to do this or that or the other as opposed to whatever the fuck the queen tells you to do. So yeah, really, I mean, the army, the department of the army, this is very much the backbone, uh, you know, foundation of the military in general. When John Wayne and James Rayner and George Washington roll off the monitor dreadnought into the saloon at the National Security Agency and get fucking shit-faced off a Texas Mickey of vodka and whiskey and d need a d uh, department of figuring out whether a motherfucker's Chinese or Japanese, yeah, we'll get there. We also need an army. Okay, we got a department of the army. Yeah, we need engineers. We need. What about the Redcoat Marines over there? Well, that, there's your Marine Corps. Yeah, what about the Navy? Yeah, exactly. They can all coordinate through these things. And again, like with the Corps of Engineers, the backbone, the, the infrastructure, the business. They've got most, yeah, the ammunition stores, the food stores. He's going to make all the food rations. The, the Navy has, think about it, in the Navy, big ships or capital ships, whatever, are big enough to have a kitchen on board. So, the right, give us food that we can cook in our ship, as opposed to Marines who need rations in a package that they rip open and write. Again, someone's got to be, someone's got to keep track of something around here. Every step has another group of people keeping track of something around somewhere. And you can see how trying to be Dr. Evil here to control, trying to control all of this yourself would be j insane, fucking insane. So yeah, again, like, you know, the Air Force and the Navy need bases, right? So again, the Army will build bases for the Air Force and the Navy. The Navy has its own engineering department for engineering boats, and the Air Force has its own department for engineering planes. But again, it's like, yeah, at, at what point am I calling home hardware instead of getting another set of wrenches or pliers? Yeah. You get it. Any tool we can get, for, yeah, whatever we can save money on, whatever we can produce ourselves, get as, yeah, as much shit going through Ace Headquarters as possible. And then if the Navy wants, yeah, the Navy can work on its own little submarine designs, whatever. They're still getting their, like, base materials and explosives for the shells. And right, you get it. And even the bullets, like, you have soldiers guarding the bases. Yes, there are infantry guarding air bases. There are infantry guarding naval ports. Well, what are you going to join the army to become a soldier, join the Navy to become an, an, a, a Marine protecting a dock? Right. Basic. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know the details. I don't I think as far as I understand, Marines are mostly used for attack than defense. Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I'm sure they do other things. But like the the army army. Yeah. What about the normal army? That's more the kind of thing where you're protecting a base. 
right Gen the there's like the larger scope and the smaller scope if we know we're gonna like world war we're gonna be gotta build bases and set up a big thing yeah the army itself is a big cumbersome beast indeed what if we just need to send a few squads of soldiers to do this or that that's usually what the marines would do you're sending troops overseas wherever yes <laughs> hopefully we're not yeah hopefully we're not gonna blow up a whole country we just want to need to do this that or the other generally that's what you'd see marines doing if we need to take over a whole country yeah you send a big army in because they're going to need food they're going to need buildings yeah exactly bases barracks is that's when you need engineers and everything else and marines and blah 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 so that's as much of a distinction as i can draw going in but you can see how one way or another the army is backbone to everything else in that sense just raw infrastructure all their buildings and facilities and yeah you get it and <clears throat> even just like um the big the biggest weapons like with nukes and all that yeah who's got the key to the nuke silos well the army has their nukes but in today's modern age the navy has nukes with their nuclear subs and the air force has nukes they can drop out of planes and, right any of them would need a signature from the president hypothetically hey the air force could just drop some nukes out of a plane right yeah it's getting more complicated today so you can see why we need more lizard man orgies with dan Aykroyd. I mean, you know, hypothetically, let's say the Army, or, sorry, let's say the Navy or the Air Force went Imperator and started dropping nukes without a president's, without telling anyone, yeah, they just decided to go nuke something one day. Well, yeah, when they get back, their base would no longer be theirs, right, yeah, since the Army built their base and we know every detail, you get it, they would have the blueprints of the base and how to get in, they would, yeah, we made a spare key, no shit whatever you know what i mean the army would take over the 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 naval ports the 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 air bases and just right until we can figure out what the fuck happened who was responsible blah 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 blah. you could only do that once basically before everything stopped and fucking here comes james rayner yeah straight up fucking marshall rayner would walk into your office at that point and okay yeah with the navy remember th there was a navy back in 1776 yeah they still had the monitor dreadnoughts indeed so they yeah there's a department of the navy as far as i know yeah who fucking knows man maybe they're lying maybe what i'm just saying there's different branches of the navy something like the navy seals th that's its own little group of marines but they're not marines they, they work for the navy right the marines are yeah yeah we all they all got their own little shit of course they have to be able to work together yeah they're not enemies they're just quote-unquote friendly rivals it's not quite as intense as cia versus waffen ss but anyway yeah like moving away from the army army or you know we'll come back to it as it comes but again something like the marines they're sort of supposed to be you know land air and sea if you need to send soldiers anywhere on the planet hypothetically they should be able to travel by sea by air or by land drop them out of a plane send them on a boat or, right whatever of course the air force has their paratroopers the navy has their seal group yeah they still have their own things but going back back in the fucking day bud yeah if we got to send troops on a boats or oh we got to sending them over in planes yeah usually they'd look to these guys are supposed to you should be able to send marines drop them onto a mountain or into the water or fucking whatever yeah i don't know <laughs> right yeah they might still die but you get it compared to like th yeah the army army the normal army that means you're intending to conquer a large vast area we're gonna be yeah building bases sending in tanks and artillery and fucking yeah yeah if you just need a, a platoon or some shit you send in the marines keeping them separate just means groups of marines can move independently on their own while the army is also doing other stuff yes the army is busy securing this area bombing that area whatever and the marines can run in and out of here there anywhere doing whatever the fuck they got to do they're still yeah they still get the same bullets from the ace headquarters there's yes exactly so yeah again in the navy they got different departments for yeah your straight up ncis naval investigation team like their own marshals just for the navy the thing with the navy you got to realize when ships leave port yeah when they're out in the middle of the ocean international waters yeah you don't doubt they need their own investigative branch to to police their own ships out at sea if something happens yeah yeah what if the captain sexually harasses you my god ncis get the rape kit yeah exactly they got their own rape kits yeah, that's, uh, that's one place that Marshall Rayner can't get to, and not until it gets back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One aspect, you know what I mean, this, they could be doing anything on that aircraft carrier out there, and even Rayner can't get out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So they got their own little Marshall's office just for that sort of thing. I, I'm not sure how well them, they must be able to talk to each other, exactly. 
And then uh, th there's like naval intelligence branches because, yeah, if they were supposed to be able to do this overseas. And then, of course, that's going to come back through central intelligence to the NSA, through the Department of Defense, all the way to Donald Trump's office, if it's important enough for Donald Trump to deal with. So yeah, you, you probably get by the time the president hears about it. Yeah, he's the the president is the last one to learn about these things. I don't know. You might assume. Oh yeah, call the president first. Yeah yeah. By the time everyone else on this list and five other li by the time the whole lizard orgy is aware of this, then we can call the president. So yeah, I mean the the Navy is obvious becomes a really big part of World War Two when we get into it. But yeah, this is World War Two is where their Navy shoots ahead and becomes the biggest thing ever. And I, we looked at the whole yeah Bismarck bullshit thing. My God, I'll touch on it again here. Yeah regardless of what you might think just as far as history shows oversized capital ships don't work that well on the water i mean whatever maybe in space yeah things might change when we get into fucking space marine star wars with the starcraft fucking marshall rainer here but on the sea if you make a giant bismarck battleship all you got to do is punk you know poke a hole in the ship and it'll sink right and the bigger it is the fast it'll start yeah you get it it's it's a liability in this theater of warfare so the u.s navy focused on yeah destroyers aircraft carriers submarines and the aircraft carrier is very much a big capital ship but it's like yeah they've <laughs> ace headquarters worked with them to figure out how big they could make it before it was excessively big well, yeah it, at this point, you might as well build two of them instead of one. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Since you're just using them to transport uh, soldiers and, and aircraft around, it doesn't need to have heavy armor or big guns on it. It just needs engines and a platform to move these things, and then you protect them with destroyers and submarines. So, yeah, it's a risky gamble indeed, but it, it sure paid off for them. There's a reason they're, yeah, right? And I don't know, I mean, they, they don't build Bismarcks. That's just, yeah, there ain't no Bismarcks coming out of this Navy. No worry, guys, you weren't the only one to every everyone went Bismarck bullshit except for the states unless they didn't have the resources to in the first place. The ones that didn't just couldn't afford it. But yeah, Japan built some huge fucking carriers. Their, their, their few carriers were bigger than the American carriers, but there were less of them, right? They probably could have built almost twice as many carriers if they sized them down. Uh, yeah, I ain't telling you guys what you should have done. My recommendation would have been to try to, yeah, those those ones were a little too big. I guess they were thinking one or two of them should have been enough for this, that, or the other. But realistically, three or four, they got defeated by three or four smaller ones, so I, whatever. Anyway, there's another important thing that the whole Department of the Navy itself has to be responsible for, I guess, is, uh, remember, border security. Half of the U.S. border are good, you know, whatever, yeah, the, the coastlines, both of them. And there's the whole international waters thing. That's kind of, as far as I understand, the main reason there's a Coast Guard separate from it is, yeah, well, how many ships are in your Navy? Yeah, how many, sh yeah, that's one reason. It's mostly just Corvettes, smaller ships, but that way the Coast Guard can focus mainly on, like, immigration-type stuff and, yeah, individuals in small boats as opposed so that the, the fucking Navy, yeah, the Admiral doesn't have to go over there with fucking Navy SEALs just because some drunk guy in his boat, like, Carlos crashed, crashed his boat in Cuba, or, yeah, you get it. P anything involving individuals and their in what might normally be considered police work, right, <laughs> working with the Marshal here. The marshal wants to know if someone's going to invade by coast. So the Coast Guard, it's like that 12-mile gap. Once you go 12 miles out, you're in international waters. Once you're in international waters, it's the executor's domain of the fucking Navy. Right. The na that's where the Navy would be. <clears throat> Within those that 12 miles, it's like, well, police boats? Uh, yeah, the Coast Guard is sort of has the right of way in that theater. Yeah, yeah. The, it is normal for the Coast Guard to come in and out of that 12-mile zone and work in between because it's mostly smaller Corvette ships that are just dealing with individuals drunk on their boats or smuggling drugs or whatever, yeah. And if there's a war with a Navy, if the fucking Kriegsmarine rolls in, then the, the Navy will come. Same with, like, search and rescue or, you know, uh, salvage or whatever. Obviously, the Navy will help if they can, but the Coast Guard is in a position to respond to, yeah, sinking boats if your fishing boat is sinking, whatever. Yeah, well, yeah, realistically, the Navy should try to help you if they can. They will, and that's why a Coast Guard is there. That's, again, get a bunch of small, cheap Corvette ships that can rip up and down the coast and help individuals with problems here, here and there so that we don't have to bring in an aircraft carrier full of nukes and Navy SEALs to deal with you and your drunk boat, basically. So yeah, I mean, again, some of this stuff's kind of obvious at face value, but when you think about it in the big picture, 
it's like taking pressure off of the main fighting group. It's like the Marines, all that. Yeah. All they're spo all they do is fight, right? They don't have to worry about stopping to build bases. The, the Navy can just focus on the fighting is a Navy. They don't, yeah. The Coast Guard is dealing with immigration stuff. The fucking right. The, the core of ACE headquarters is dealing with finicky engineering stuff. If, if something breaks, just call ACE headquarters. Right. Yeah. They all have uh, someone backing them up in this, that, or the other. So as a whole, assuming that enough pieces are functioning together, that's how you end up with this massive kind of right, like to have this big Navy working with this army, like everything like this working together so smoothly. Yeah, in a, that's what I meant by the bureaucracy. You kind of need this sort of bureaucracy for this to work unless you are, in fact, Stalin and can do this yourself for 50 years. That's fucking crazy. And then as far as I know, with like the National Guard, that's mainly just the reserves, basically. So they, a, a bunch of people sign on for like National Guard reserves. And in the event of a Praetor apocalypse of the fucking executor, then they may in fact have to go fight. It, right. Yeah. It just means you're the last in line. It, right. We're not. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> probably not going to send you to Afghanistan or fucking Iraq or Baghdad or fucking China or whatever. But if the, if the Chinese are, communists come here, yeah, right. Whatever. You get what I mean. It's the quote quote-unquote bottom of the barrel but i mean whatever it's again kind of like with drafting if you get drafted you could join the national guard reserve and you will only have to fight if the country gets invaded kind of thing there again options and getting around the quota of how many people are in the army well the army yeah exactly the national guard might be different right we we can take people from the national guard and put them in the army yeah exactly and I guess as far as I can speculate, you might be wondering, well, why didn't a lot of, yeah, you'd think a lot more people would have done this instead of, like, going off to Vietnam and not wanting to. As far as I could, like, yeah, I can't blame a lot of them for not knowing more about it, but I would guess that if they did try to run away or whatever and then go, I don't know, yeah, like, I, I yeah, drafting is stupid. It's unnecessary in almost any case. And yeah, right? It, it, instead, you could do something like this. As you might get this complicated fucking bureaucracy nonsense. This way they don't have to. This is how they were able to stop drafting and, and conscripting and whatever, right? It's still, yeah, the last fucking option, no kidding. But this way, it's like, oh no, we have reserves. We have state trooper reserves, National Guard reserves, fucking Coast Guard boats, yeah, FedEx planes for fucking airmail, yeah, priority airmail from the postal postman. We have many options. Yeah, I mean, really, becoming a postal worker would be one way out of it. In in way, yeah, there are options indeed, and this is the thing about the whole, like, you might get too. It's like if you want to be peaceful and not fight, and it's like, okay, I'm just ignoring the problem won't help. If you knew more about it, you would know about all these options, but think about it. Imagine you were didn't know one way or the other. Like, if you were more ignorant back in the day, thinking, oh, if I don't join the army, I'll get arrested, or I have to leave the country. Well, yeah, I don't want to get arrested or leave the country, so I guess I have to join the army. If you just went there and said, I want to join the army, yeah, sh sure enough, some guy is gonna put you in the Marine Corps, whatever, you get it. If you went there with knowing more about it you could say yeah and whatever engineering corps national guard reserve fucking the post office yeah and you're a federal employee now a fucking god damn it right options indeed sometimes they don't want you to know your options but yeah that's why knowing things can help yeah, and then as for the the Air Force on this list, I mean, yeah, what more can I say? It, it's there there is something to it though. So yeah, World War Two is where this sort of becomes. Yeah, we need an Air Force, no shit. Get these P fifty one Mustangs going, and that's the main interceptor. And then they have their B fifteen or B, whatever flying fortresses. Oh, it's up to B fifty two. Yeah, they they kept going with the B seventeen bombers. There's all sorts of bombers. But the big flying fortress planes, that was the main big, that's the one that with the Potato Face Batman straight up in Pearl Harbor when Potato Face Batman went to go bomb Japan, right, they were flying those flying fortress planes. And then the P-51 is the main interceptor they were using. They also had their, this is the thing, the Navy has its own Air Force for the carriers, yes. The the Air Force is land-based, it's area 50, areas 1 to 52 or whatever, you know what I mean, there's one in every state at least, and probably more. So all those hidden secret air bases, that's the Air Force. And they were the ones, like, pioneering the first nukes, right? I don't know. They, Of course they work together, but they're different departments. It's just easier to manage. This way the NCIS knows where to bring the rape kit. They're not going to bring the rape kit to Area 51. Yeah, exactly. So basically, yeah, the... the uh, they had to call Ace Headquarters, of course, yeah, they, base, they had to figure out how to get these aircraft carriers working in time, right, yeah, yeah fucking tick-tock, anything could happen, yeah, Hitler's gone nuts, 
<laughs> that's just the beginning yeah right anything could happen competition blah 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 someone yeah someone's got to keep track of something around here marshall rainers being a yeah jocking our ass uh, what do we do we need to get these we need to <laughs> right imagine this is your job what I'm saying is they had to design airplanes just for the carriers. And it's like, again, th there's no point spending extra money on carrier planes if they're coming off the ground. Yes, the Air Force can build its air-based planes where they can have longer runways. The Navy is going to have to invest in more expensive, better planes that can go off of the carriers, blah, 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 blah. They're still working together, ideally. And uh, coming out of this, you get these, uh, as far as I'm thinking, the Navy uh, Air Force did most of the fighting. The P-51s and stuff, that was what? They probably sent some over for the Battle of Britain because no one got that close to the U.S. in World War II. You know what I mean? Right. Japanese might have got close. They got as close as fucking Hawaii. So most of the fighting, they might have had a few P-51s working off of the air bases out in, like, Midway and stuff, just, like, as interceptors blocking planes from coming in, but most of the actual fighting would have been done by the, the carrier, like, aircraft, the, the, the Corsairs coming off the carriers in the Navy. And then, as for the normal U.S. Air Force, they would have been building the P-51s, probably shipping them over to fucking Britain for the Battle of Britain, and setting up in some of their bases here and there just as defense, and then, of course, the B-17 Flying Fortress bombers for their bomb raids and then of course once the nuke comes out and then going into the cold war the cold war is where it really kicks in with jets and all that but yeah their main role in world war ii would have been the bombing raids and then of course the straight the nuking when then when it came to the nukes that's who was dropping them right yeah, really. I mean, the Air Force had access to nuking things first, and even with or without a president's signature, they very much could have put more nukes in more planes and done more nuking. So, yeah, every, then it, the ballistic missiles coming out of the ground is with the Army comes later. That's the Cold War tension where they're worried about it. That'll come up during the Cold War, but you get how at this point they all have nukes one way or another, even if they're locked away in a facility. Like, the Navy has nukes ready in... Yeah, they're inside the, the submarines, the goddamn Boomer Sub Warfare Division, sir. Fucking... Yeah, right. They gotta be... They're supposed to be ready. Yeah, so they don't have to sail back home, fill up on nukes, and get back out there. Yeah, no, they gotta be ready to fire... It, you get how now it's like we've passed the, the yeah th this whole system based on we need two keys yeah all it takes is one hipster douchebag i'm not honestly not sure how far away f we are from one hipster douchebag you get it because what if one admiral or one captain can just launch nukes out of his submarine or if an air force general can just put nukes in a plane and fly somewhere right it's, it's, yeah, riding the edge of crazy. James Rayner needs to know what the fuck is going on.